Hello Knockouts, Tanya TKO here. And something has been weighing really heavily on my heart since last week. And I'm not sure why it's weighing so heavily on me, but I'm hoping that we can have a chance to talk about it. Maybe you can share some of your ideas with me. You guys have been really great with sharing your ideas and helping me learn and grow as a person as well. So I wanted to present this to you and see what you thought about it. And just open up, a, I'd love to open up a dialogue about this. And speaking of dialogues, remember if you'd like to converse with me live, I broadcast live every Wednesdays. You can find me on tanyatko.com. You see my website address is right here. tanyatko.com forward slash live. That's L I V E. And I do a live advice hour every Wednesday. You can always see the most updated time. It's usually between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But if that time ever changes, you'll be able to see that on the page. So you can go there, check out when the next live broadcast is going to be. Come over, see me live, interact with me live, ask your questions, um, and touch base that way. So basically, today's today's video is about something that really had a profound impact on me. Right now the production loft is in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. And because we're a commercial business, we have to take our recyclables to the recycle plant. And they've recently stopped taking plastic recycle and they actually send that paper recycle over to China. That's a whole other story. Actually, I've been reading in the news a lot that they take our recyclables, our aluminum, our precious metals, etc., over to China and then um, and they I don't know the full truth of that. I, I don't know the full impact of that, but I do hear that we're taking our resources, sending them over there, and they're using those or recycling those, and I, I don't know. You get back to me on that. But what this video is about is how ironic. Sunset Park is a, is a mixed neighborhood, um, Latino and Asian. And when we came back from taking the paper recycles, because we had, we had to put the plastic recycle out on the curb, and when we came back from taking the paper down to the paper recycle plant, there was an Asian woman digging through our plastic recycles. We shred our sensitive documents. So when I saw her digging through the plastic recycle, I was really concerned because there are some things that have the business name, et cetera, on, on plastic buckets and containers, et cetera, that go out for the recycle. So when she's digging through it, I'm just, I'm standing there staring at her trying to figure out what it is that she's doing and how she could be so bold and emblazoned to start digging through people's stuff right there in broad daylight. And then I saw what it was that she was doing. And she was actually digging in there for plastic um, bottles with the five cent. In New York, we have the five cent recycle claim fee. So she's digging through there. I personally, I drink, a, I drink about a gallon of water a day, somewhere between three quarters and a gallon of water a day. So I go through those. I need to get a reverse osmosis machine, but I don't have one set up here at work. But I need to, I need to get one permanently installed because I go through a lot of bottled water and that plastic is not good for the environment. So that's why I'm happy to recycle. But she was digging through for the five cent refund that she would get on these bottles. And I'm just, I'm standing there. So she's digging through the plastic recycle for this five cent refund claim on these bottles. And I'm standing there looking at her. She sees me looking. She continues doing what she's doing. And after I get over the initial shock, I'm like, wait just a moment please i'm like because i have i mean i have so many more bottles that she could use they're just taking up so much space right and i um and i'm like wait just a moment and she doesn't really seem to understand english very well hmm. but i'm like wait just a moment i have I'm trying to do some sort of sign i'm like i have more i have more and i'm telling her i will go up and i will bring them for you right so i think the the sign I think that kind of translated to wait for her and then <laughs> I think that translated to I will bring more. I don't know, but she, she sort of understood and she, she stood there waiting. So I ran up and I started gathering all of the bottles that I could find. I don't know why this is troubling me so much, but I ran up and I found all of the bottles that I could find. It amounted to about six. And I when, when I was bringing them down for her, she looked, the look on her face, mm. 
Now, I had a chance to see her without her actually seeing me because as I came down, like the look on her face, I, I don't know how to describe it, but she was, it, it seemed as if she was experiencing a bit of trepidation. And she was like looking around like, should I leave, should I leave? And she actually turned to go. And so as you can imagine with these big gallon things, I have like, I have like six of them. So with like these big gallon things, my arms are like completely full. So she sees me come to the, to the glass door and like this, this look of elation took over her. And she came to run to the door to open it for me. Now it's locked. You can't access it from the outside, but she ran to come assist me opening the door, right? And so I get out the door and I give her, mm, I'm sorry, this is really, mm, give me just a moment, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't want to be emotional over this, but this has really had such an impact on me, right? Whew. Okay, so she runs to help me get, get these plastic bottles out the door and I give them to her and she's so full of glee for what amounted to be 30 cents. I'm sorry, but I think there's something fundamentally wrong with that and and I stood there watching her and she crushed the plastic bottles and she put them in her bag so that she could go along so that she could collect more plastic bottles wherever it was that she was going to dig through people's throwaway to get these plastic bottles for five cents each. Now number one, you know, there's a, a slight racial dynamic to this for me because I know growing up I had been I had been treated cruelly by some people in some Asian shops and I have heard these really horrible rumors about the way black people are treated in some Asian countries or the way that some Asian people look down on black folks or whatever I don't know and I don't know what interaction this woman has had with black people I really don't know but that was of no concern to me at the time but I know that sometimes when we act in a certain way we for that person represent an entire race of people I'm not saying that this is right but I know that this is some sometimes something that happens so there I am standing there as this black businesswoman giving this woman to the the joy and elation of her being the sum of 30 cents and her being so happy about it and then her making more room to be able to go off to the next spot and collect more of these bottles and what when I looked at her she was there was a part of her that looked like she wanted to reach out and thank me more like the look on her face of such gratitude was very stunning for me because 30 cents means nothing to me those bottles meant nothing to me and when I looked in her eyes I saw that there are so many wasted resources in our society so many throwaway people that we disregard and think nothing of as they pass by and the way that she came out with this elation I can imagine that not many people are kind to her oh goodness give me a moment I'm sorry I can imagine that not many people are kind to her and I started thinking what is the difference between she and I you know she doesn't speak any English but that doesn't mean that she doesn't have any worth or any value. And I started thinking about who this woman might be and what exactly it is that she could be contributing to our society. But instead of being able to contribute her gifts and being able to give that which she possesses naturally the strength that she has, instead of being able to give forth the resources that she has inside of her, she is instead spending her time on the street collecting bottles and cans so that she can get five cents each. And I say, 
what a waste what a waste in our society and I look around and I think about how wasteful we are as a people not with our 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 tangible resources but the intangible gifts that each human being possesses I thought about that woman and I wondered who was she in her country what did she do in her country and what could she have done in ours is this the American dream to come to America and collect bottles and cans that are discarded from the people who have more for the people who have not is that the American dream to come here and fulfill that need is it and I looked at her and I wondered, I wonder who could this woman have been? And let me tell you, I don't know why this is having such a tremendous impact on me. But when I looked into that woman's eyes, I saw that she was no different than me. And I wonder, oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me keep, let me keep going forward. I wondered. Could that woman have been a doctor? Could that woman have been a doctor back in China or Korea or wherever it is that she came from? <clears throat> and I wondered what could she have been here? And I look around at how we treat our citizens in this country. You know, I wondered one of the things that I wondered is, what could she have contributed besides being on the street, squandering her life essence, searching for bottles and cans? Even if she were not going to be a doctor or some scientist, when I'm thinking of her and I'm like, she could have been the one who discovered the next cure to something, but instead of really fully fulfilling what it is that she has inside, she's collecting bottles and cans. And even if, maybe she's not scientifically gifted, perhaps not, but she does have a resource. She speaks some Asian language. Could she have worked in a daycare? teaching an Asian language to the children? Could she have been an amazing caregiver? Could she have? And it's like everybody has their own natural, their own natural abilities that they possess, their own natural gifts that they can give forth. And then yesterday something else happened and this is why I decided to make this video today because this had just weighed on my heart and I would not said anything about it to anybody besides my assistant. I spoke to my assistant about it and I was like, wow, what a shame. And I spoke to him about, <clears throat> about the American dream, right? But I hadn't spoken to anybody else about it, but something happened yesterday. I was watching this newscast. I was actually, I was watching the Young Turks and they were talking about segregation still being present in America. And you know, a lot of people are against desegregation because they were like, oh, we had things were so much better when we were in our clusters as black people. But what we don't take into account is that, is that our tax dollars pay for our schooling. But for some reason, most of the money and most of the funds were being appropriated to schools where people of a certain color resided and attended while the schools in poor neighborhoods did not have the same resources they had outdated old broken books torn up books etc and so here's the heart of the video I know sometimes I take a while to get to the point but here's the heart of the video I was watching this and it was talking about how segregation is still alive where segregation has taken on a new face where now financial ability is able to segregate people racially. I thought about this a few months ago in New York because in New York you don't have to re-implement racial segregation anymore. All you have to do is create an environment where people who do not possess a certain amount of economic standing are not able to participate in certain activities or live in certain neighborhoods. So in essence, because black people in this country earn a fraction. We're talking about $8,000 net worth compared to $60,000 net worth. And I marveled, I marveled at how, you know, you create a rental situation where the monthly rent is 
$3,000, $5,000, $10,000 a month. And you don't have to say, oh, we don't want blacks and Latinos here. All you have to do is create an environment where people just can't afford those rents. Like the whole of New York City is becoming an area which is pushing people out who can't afford to spend the higher money on rent. So that people of color, quote unquote, minorities are slowly being pushed out of New York so that they have to go and find refuge in other places. And so I was listening to this report where they were talking about segregation still being alive and well here in the United States. And I was like, I throw my hands up. I throw my hands up and I think that, that the direction that we're going in as a country is good for America. And I can't wait for America to reap what it is that it's sowing. I mean, if you think about it, all of this is just so damn stupid. It's so damn stupid. It really is. It's like here we are, we're spending so much time concentrating on, on, on who's an N-word, who's not an N-word, who's unworthy, who's not unworthy, all of this segregation and all of these politics and all of this holding certain people back and, and pushing down women and all of this other stuff. And I'm like, you know what, if this is the direction that America wants to go in, then let America go in that direction and let America fall. Who's poor, who's unworthy, who's part of the 1%, who's part of the 99, who's, who should be kept back, who should be put in jail, the eugenics of it, who's superior, pushing women down, women ain't this, women don't have, subjugating women, using them as sex objects and all of this other stuff. And I look at the direction that we're going in and I'm like, you know what? I, part of me just feels like throwing my hands up and saying, you know what? That's good for America. If this is the direction that America wants to go in, let America go in that direction and see where it leads it to its downfall. I don't remember who was the historian that said this, whether it was Frederick Douglass or Booker T. Washington, but it talked about how America as a whole will not be able to rise as long as it's pushing down some of its citizens. Like that whole segregation and that whole Jim Crow and all of that other damn foolishness. It's like what America didn't understand at the time is that America was actually subjugating its own people. It's like when you think about America as a nation, how far can we go as a nation while we're subjugating our own people? Let's think, let's, let's hash this out. Let's think about the mentality behind this, right? In all of these schools across America, Right? There's so many different students who, and you know the children are the future. There are different things that we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to get someplace scientifically. We're trying to work on stem cells. We're trying to work on cures for diseases. We're trying to work on, on uplifting ourselves as a society, as a nation. But instead of focusing on educating the young people, we're still focusing on stupid old antics of segregation and trying to keep certain people back so that other people can rise up. Who knows what little black boy or little Asian girl is going to be the scientist of the future to take America into the next millennium of discoveries and advancements? Who knows? Who knows who's going to be the next doctor to come up with the great cure for society or come up with the, the, next, the next invention that's going to be able to help us live longer, live more efficiently. And gosh, just who knows? But instead of trying to uplift the whole nation, we're so busy still on this old segregation foolishness. And I'm like, wow, how dumb can we be? How stupid can we be? It's just, it's, it's freaking ridiculous at how the resources of our future are being squandered, kept back, un undiscovered. Why? Over what? Because of skin color or where somebody's ancestors are from? What about right now where we can all go as a nation? And I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed at what it is that we're doing here in this country. I'm, I'm appalled. If we really, truly cared about the advancement of our nation, we would be doing anything in our power to make sure that our children are educated, that our people are healthy, that our people are uplifted, and that our people have the tools to thrive and survive. But instead, 
we're pumping the people full of chemicals, GMOs, and all types of toxic chemicals so that people are sick and dying. And we are spending more money on war than on education. We are constantly showing the nation what it is that's important to us and it's not the people. And I think about it and I'm like, this is so very unpatriotic. GMOs, the chemicals inside all of our products, the things that are killing Americans, stopping Americans from living longer, all of these hydrogenated fats, these high fructose corn syrups, unleashing all of these byproducts and biochemicals and all of these toxins and neurotoxins and biotoxins on the people. It's unpatriotic. And then I was listening to Alex Jones last month. And he was talking about how these people in power, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, etc., that they want to deplete the population by about 70%. That they want to wipe out and kill most of the people. I'm not sure if he said in this country or on the planet. But then I started thinking, would it serve them to really kill most of the people on the planet so that, let's say, the population of the planet was down to 30%? of what it was before so that only the people who were rich and the people who have are still here and I had to pontificate is that something that these people would want would they want a world in which everybody who's alive is rich and able to float on their yachts and then what would be the whole point what would be the purpose okay so you stack up all of your money and most of the population is dead and then you have a yacht and you you you, you roll around on your boat then what what happens then? Okay, after you finish rolling on your boat, then what? You come back from your boat and then you ride in your fast car and you go up into your fancy house and your penthouse and, and then what? Then what? What do you do after that? What is, what, what would be the, what still, what's the purpose of life? And there's a part of me that thinks that they don't want people to they don't want the population to cease as we know it because then what will be the fun? I think most of the fun for some people is to have while other people disparagingly do not have. And I think that that's part of the, that's part of the, the capitalistic dream for them. So that if everybody here left on earth had their boat and were flying around in their private jets, what would be the point after that? Do they just, I mean, really, if you really think about it, what's, what's in it at the end of the day? Okay. We're still, where is the, where is the human resource that's going to come up with the, the next cure, the next best thing? I was reading about hemp. And that part of the reason that hemp is outlawed is because it would put cotton manufacturers, tobacco manufacturers, paper manufacturers out of business because hemp is one of the strongest one of the strongest fibers that we have strongest materials we can make clothing out of strongest material we can make rope out of and it would also instead of chopping down entire forests that we could use hemp to create paper and the paper would be sturdier and stronger than what it is that we have now but part of the reason that hemp is not brought forward is because of money politics people who want to hold on to their onto their money and I'm like really so we're going to continue to chop down forests, endangering the planet and not really being the best that we can be as human beings just so that some people can make money. And I'm like, if that's the way we want to live on Earth, then let's see where it's going to take us as a planet. Instead of doing what's in the best good of all of the people, let's see where that's going to take us as a planet where we have where we spend more money on war than on educating children. Where 1% of the U.S. population, we're talking about 1 in 100 people in the United States are locked up in jails. That's the way, listen, if that's the way that we want to live, should we just let this country go that way? Why is it that if the 99% don't agree with what the 1% are doing, why is it that we don't do anything about it? Why is it that we're asleep? A friend of mine lived in Rochester and they were heavily involved in local politics there. I don't know what it's like now, but back when he was in college, you know parking tickets that we get on the street in New York, you get a parking ticket, the parking ticket is $125. 
Now, who agrees with a $125 ticket? Who agrees with that? But yet, we don't agree with this, but yet we still pay it and we feel like there's nothing that we can do with the people that we pay to, with our tax dollars, the people that we pay to represent us or the people that we elect into public office are not behaving and operating in a manner that we feel is representative of our best interest or things that we even want to be implemented. He was saying that up in Rochester that they do not have expensive parking tickets. I believe he said the parking ticket was like $10 because the people came together and was like, we don't want these high parking tickets and they did something about it. So how many of us feel that local politics and local government is something that's out of our control? And I'm like, well, how much longer do we sit here asleep? It's like they have us placated up on sickness and reality TV so that so much of our time and attention is spent watching people act and cut the fool on, t on television and in media that we don't even worry about what really matters. It's like we're walking sleep. How many of us agree to GMOs? But yet these people are running amok in Washington. People who, who, who once worked for Monsanto now sitting on the board of the FDA and vice versa and back forth. They're doing what they feel is in their best interest to be able to keep the dollar circulating around and among the 1%. But how many of us agree with that and how many of us are willing to do what it is that we need to do to do something about it? How many of us are really actively involved in local politics? How many, it's like, it's like there's so many of us, there are millions of us. We outnumber the lawmakers thousands to one, maybe even hundreds of thousands to one. We have a few people creating the laws and, and the bylaws for millions of people. I mean, it's like you see inside all of these other countries where people just get fed up and they storm the capital and they take the people in power, out of power. And it's like here in America, if we don't like something, we just turn over and go eat some refined food product and we just, we just, we occupy ourselves, we placate ourselves with some pastries. Or we turn on the TV and we numb ourselves watching reality TV. We don't really do anything about making and creating some real change. So I'm like, here we are in this country and we are destroying the planet keeping down human resources at the detriment of, of scientific development, at uh, the detriment of biochemical and biological advancements. All for what? All for what? At the end of the day, all for what? And I'd love to hear some of your feedback on this because there is more than enough money to go around more than enough but why is it that we allow trillions to be spent on war while our children go without art and without music why is it that we will compensate athletes and people with millions of dollars while teachers go underrepresented underpaid under respected teachers people who take care of our future think about the job that a teacher has a teacher is tasked with the job of of educating our young and bringing them up into being the adults of tomorrow why is it that teachers in America are not better respected not better paid but a person who dribbles a ball around or a person who acts in front of a movie screen they are well compensated how many more people would prefer to become a teacher if it were not so lucrative to become something else and I'm like where are we going as a nation I don't know that's my whole video I got it all off my chest I'm just why do we do it? Why do we sit here so quietly accepting what it is that's been thrown at us? When are we going to wake up? We are heading towards a dystopia. We're headed towards an apocalyptic future where there will be nothing. There will be nothing. And it's like these people are so stupid. They don't realize that their children's children's children will have nothing on this planet. All those movies that you see, the future Terminator and you, all these future movies that you see with people who are struggling and, and living in despair, no trees on the planet, that's where we're headed. We're poisoning our lakes, we're poisoning the planet, we're poisoning the people, and we're not conscious in the people. And the thing is that this is not the typical nature of human beings. Human beings are typically and naturally loving. So why is it that we as a people, 
Why is it that we, the people, sit here numb and asleep instead of really fully helping each other, which is natural to us? I'm sorry. I got that all off my chest. I'd love your comments and feedback below. And if you made it to the end of this video, I would love for you to make any sentence starting with we the people. Any sentence. Just let's talk about what we the people are going to do, what we the people need to do to rise up out of this sleeping state, to be able to have a world like what we want, like what the 99% want. 99% of the people don't want dolphins dying and wildlife being poisoned by oils. And why are we still even using oil when there are more efficient ways, oh God, cleaner ways? But it's, oh gosh, I need your help. Give me some ideas. Tell me, what can we do? What can we do? Gosh, I feel so lost. I feel so helpless. I don't know what to do because it's like when I talk about Jay-Z and I talk about Solange or Beyonce or, or, or the Real Housewives, when I made, look at my video list. I made that video about Steve Harvey and Nico and some show I never even watched before. I made a video just about Steve Harvey's statements. And the video got 30 something thousand views. Look at my regular videos, 2,000 views. So it's like, we the people don't even want to make a change. We the people are caught up in this celebrity gossip. We the people are not awake and we like being asleep. If you want to wake up, comment on this video. If you want other people to wake up, share this video. I dare you, share this video. Let's start the dialogue. What can we the people do? What can we the people do? Come and talk to me live Wednesday, every Wednesday on TanyaTKO.com. You see my website right here, TanyaTKO.com forward slash live. You'll see the date and the, the, the phone number and everything that you can call in live. Let's have a conversation. You can call in, get some, some advice, etc. Let's talk about what we the people are going to do. I dare you, share this video. When you come over to my website, you'll see all of the links for all of my presence all over the internet, on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, etc. All of my links are on my website, even Google+. You can come and link up with me there. You can write to me. Let's stay in touch. This is something that hits very close to my heart. And anybody who is a parent knows how I feel because when you think about the world that we're leaving to our children and you see how it's being destroyed by people who are short-sighted all this segregation and and you know what the thing about it is who are these racist people there's so few of them it's like these people who really believe that we should be segregated how many of me or oh, most people that I know have a uh, have a an entourage of multi-ethnic friends who are these die-hard ignorant racists that want to keep these eugenics who are these people who want to keep other people back? We, it's not even the average person. The average person is loving and giving. But if you look at the news, you see how they, at how they make it look like the average person is a killer, or we need to be aware, and, and people are, and black people are under attack, and all of this stuff. Oh God, hug me! I gotta get out of here. Hug me, hug me, strengthen me. Let's strengthen. Hug me, hug me, please, hug me, hug me. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love you all so very much. <sighs> Go out there and love one another. Most importantly, love yourself. And when you start talking about loving yourself, right? And you look into the eyes of another person who is not you, and you see how much in common with you this other person has. So that in loving yourself, you love other people because you know that that person is an extension of yourself. Like I said, what we're doing is so unpatriotic. It is killing our citizens, Americans undereducated. We used to be number one, but now we have fallen down on the list in terms of that we are some of the sickest, some of the most poorly educated, some of the most incarcerated people on earth. 
That's not patriotic. GMOs are not patriotic. Not looking out for our people is not patriotic at all. I'd love your comments below. Remember what to start your sentence with if you made it to the end of this video. Tani TK and I love you very much. And I'm out. Peace.